When we imagine cutting sleep out of our lives, we tend to frame it as nothing more than reclaimed hours, as though the dark stretch after dusk were a dispensable luxury that a productivity-obsessed culture has taught us to optimize. In truth, sleep is not a passive interval, but a vital behavior etched by evolution into every creature with a nervous system. From insects to mammals, cycles of activity and quiet appear, and interrupting them threatens survival. Even before discussing neuroscience, it is worth recalling that for a predator, falling asleep means exposing itself to danger. The fact that sleep has endured for millennia shows that its benefits far outweigh its risks. 21st century imaging techniques, genetic analyses, and animal models reveal the price paid when that fragile balance is broken. The fallout is no mere tiredness, but a systemic failure involving brain, gut, cardiovascular, immune, and endocrine systems, culminating in a toxic buildup of oxidizing agents that, in experiments on flies and mice, leads to death in roughly 10 days. The first sleepless day feels like a colossal jet lag. As melatonin ebbs, the prefrontal cortex loses efficiency, reaction times lengthen, and self-control wobbles. Stripped of slow wave and REM stages, the brain cannot properly consolidate yesterday's memories. So after only 20 hours awake, you may struggle to recall details you learned that morning. Hormonally, cortisol and ghrelin rise, leptin falls, and an insatiable craving for quick carbohydrates kicks in. Not a whim, but a bid to flood neurons with glucose they can no longer extract smoothly from the bloodstream. The pancreas, battered by glycemic spikes, releases more insulin than necessary, setting you up for post-meal stupor. Meanwhile, dopamine surges to mask drowsiness, giving a false sense of energy. During those first hours, many people feel fine precisely because they are running on adrenaline. Around the 32nd hour, the first microsleeps strike, split-second episodes in which thalamic nuclei flick consciousness off for self-preservation. A driver or heavy machinery operator becomes a public hazard because the interruptions go unnoticed. 500 milliseconds of blackout are enough to drift across an entire motorway lane. Unstable vigilance ripples through the visual cortex, which starts mistaking neutral stimuli for threats, hence irritability, sudden outbursts, and paranoid interpretations of other people's glances. The hippocampus, unable to synchronize with the neocortex during nightly rest, repeatedly ejects incomplete mnemonic patterns. You may catch yourself obsessively replaying the same phrases, as though the mind were desperately looking for the save file command that never comes. Meanwhile, the immune system registers a crash in natural killer cells. A mundane rhinovirus could trigger fever and congestion within hours. At 48 hours, sleep deprivation becomes the laboratory equivalent of severe alcohol intoxication. Neurocognitive tests reveal gross eye-hand coordination errors, yet subjects paradoxically rate their own performance highly. It is the anisognosia of prolonged wakefulness. The more you err, the less you notice. Adenosine levels, which normally drop during sleep, keep climbing, saturating receptors and blunting caffeine's effect. The body counters with tachycardia and vasoconstriction. Systolic pressure can spike 20-30 mmHg in otherwise normotensive people. Intestinal epithelial cells, forced to toil without their nightly maintenance break, accumulate reactive oxygen species. In mice, neutralizing those ROS with targeted antioxidants prolongs survival, confirming the damage is not all in the head. Day 3 marks the psychotic threshold. Randy Gardner's 1964 record, 11 days awake under medical supervision, shows the pattern. By hour 6070, he reported visual hallucinations. A road sign turning into a person, stains crawling across walls, and derealization, the feeling that the surroundings were fake or made of cardboard. These symptoms arise from decoupling between occipital cortex and parietal lobe. Images arrive, but the brain fails to weld them to semantic memory. Parallel suppression of thalamic GABA circuits, the sensory filter, makes everything feel too loud. 
dazzling lights, pounding noises, nauseating smells. Cardiac QT dispersion widens, predisposing to tachyrrhythmias. Thermoregulation falters, alternating chills with sudden sweats. Between the fourth and fifth day, the boundary between waking and sleep shatters into confusional episodes. You can speak to someone and within a couple of sentences, slip into an open-eyed micro-dream. In hospital, an EEG would show K-complexes and sleep spindles. Hallmarks of N2, despite the patient appearing awake. The limbic system fires off a corticotropin storm. Interleukin-6 rises, establishing chronic inflammation that predisposes to thrombosis. The liver, forced to detoxify a surplus of catecholamines and glucocorticoids, skews lipid metabolism. Triglycerides soar while HDL cholesterol drops. Neurologically, a progressive deficit of ion channels and spinal motor neurons yields rigidity and tremors akin to Parkinsonism. Sex hormones crash. Testosterone in men is halved. Women's menstrual cycles go haywire. Past a week, studies in rats, flies, and dogs indicate organ damage turns irreversible. In mice, near total sleeplessness for 9 to 10 days causes intestinal mucosa necrosis, bacterial translocation to the blood, and septic shock. No ventilation or antibiotics can save them unless sleep is restored. Animals die of multi-organ failure, not generic exhaustion. Pharmacological torpor induced, for example, with GABA receptor agonists, does not substitute true sleep. The crucial alternation of REM and non-REM is missing, and ion pumps never reboot, nor do glial cisterns flush metabolic debris. The decisive proof comes from the glymphatic system. During slow-wave sleep, cerebral arteries and veins pulse and sync with locus coeruleus activity, generating cerebrospinal flow that washes away beta amyloid and tau, Block this oscillation with sedatives and the proteins accumulate, pyramidal neurons losing synaptic spines. The picture grows darker because chronic sleep loss reshapes epigenetic regulation. In hematopoietic stem cells, methylation of key immune response genes rises, cutting memory T-cell production. In adipose tissue, hypermethylation of adiponectin promoters fosters insulin resistance. Sleeping too little for months durably raises the risk of type 2 diabetes and atherosclerosis. Lack of sleep also undermines BDNF-dependent synaptic plasticity. Motor and language learning slows, a phenomenon seen in medical residents pulling all-night shifts. Attempts to catch up over a weekend give partial relief. Half the immune and metabolic functions take weeks to return to baseline because they need multiple consecutive circadian cycles. A human case proves the body's dependence on these dark hours. Fatal familial insomnia, a hereditary prion disease in which a mutant PRP protein accumulates in the anteroventral thalamus, the sleep-wake crossroads. Patients progressively lose the ability to enter deep sleep. Within months, they develop hallucinations, dysautonomia, refractory hypertension, and profuse sweating. Death follows inevitably within 7 to 36 months. No therapy can restore the ultra DN cycle once those thalamic nuclei degenerate, underscoring that pills cannot replace sleep. Hypnotics may sedate, but if they block slow waves or REM, they worsen the neurometabolic balance. A mouse study with Zolpidem showed a drop in the noradrenergic oscillation responsible for glymphatic cleansing, urging caution with chronic hypnotic use. Culturally, our era is tugged by two opposing narratives, the hustle culture myth that sleep is an obstacle to success, and the wellness industry hawking sleep tracking gadgets and supplements of dubious efficacy. Both risk ignoring the biochemical complexity of rest. Caffeine, nicotine, and amphetamine-like stimulants can plug performance gaps for hours, but they do so by draining neurotransmitter reserves and disrupting ionic homeostasis. Come Monday, the bill arrives as serotonin dip depression and lipid cravings. The only truly sustainable strategy is safeguarding the night window from blue light, noise, and notifications perhaps with repetitive rituals that teach the hypothalamus when to release melatonin. 
Shift workers, such as nurses or logistics staff, should schedule micro naps in a dark room and wear orange tinted glasses during the morning commute. Are the described damages reversible? It depends on duration and intensity. A healthy adult who skips one night can recover almost completely in two deep sleep cycles. Visual memory tests and insulin sensitivity rebound after 48 hours of regular rest. But after weeks limited to four or five hours a night, it takes months to normalize blood pressure and regain pre-morbid immune efficiency. In mice, some thin synapses lost to prolonged deprivation never reform, hinting that sleep loss accelerated aging is not wholly reversible. Yet longitudinal lifestyle studies show that improving sleep hygiene at 40 cuts dementia risk 40% two decades later, proof that intervention is never pointless. Ultimately, giving up sleep is neither a harmless experiment nor an act of heroic willpower, but a breach of an untouchable evolutionary contract. Sleep is the workshop shift in which the brain disinfects itself, the immune system retrains its troops, the heart slows to self-repair, and the gut expels oxidant waste. Without that maintenance stint, the entire biological machine short-circuits and if deprivation is absolute, collapses outright. The dream of replacing it with drugs, stimulants, or deep meditation is, for now, wishful thinking. No procedure replicates the symphony of neuropeptides, electrical waves, and vascular pulses that cycle through NREM and REM. Every civilization has ritualized the transition from day to night, from early Homo sapiens murmuring by the hearth, to medieval curfews, to monastic silences. Respecting those hours means acknowledging the limits of the organism we inhabit. Ignoring them is like tearing pages from a manual and then wondering why the machine breaks down. In a world that demands constant connectivity, sleep remains the last act of ecological and biological descent, the most profitable investment we can make in our future health.